will receive quality, affordable health care? How will I ensure? That's a great question. Um, our health care system is just crumbling. Premiums are higher, quality's lower. Uh, we need to do something. And inaction is what Congress has given us thus far. And ultimately, we have to find a path forward that works. I'm not going to tell you I have the answer. Anybody that tells you that they have the answer is not realistic. Um, but I'm going to sit down at the table and I'm going to work through the issues. Obviously, we uh, need to overhaul it. Pre-existing conditions is an issue. Making sure everybody has access to affordable health care is an issue. But also creating market forces to make sure that uh, there's competition to get better results is important. So there's a lot of variables and we just got to sit down and, and work out a solution that actually uh, is, is something that, that will help our country. When you say overhaul, you mean overhaul of ACA? I don't even think that we should think in terms of the current structure. I don't think that uh, the ACA is working. I don't think anybody thinks it's working. So I, I just think we need to go back to the drawing board, look at best practices. One of the models that has had some promise is block granting it down. I, I could support that, but all that's going to do is just give 50 different laboratories to see what works. We'll have a couple of states go bankrupt and uh, they will then change their ways. So, I spoke with the League of Women Voters last week and they told me that um, you know they're, they're, they've had a big uh, drive to get more younger uh, folks registered <coughs> to vote and a big uh, motivator for them to, to register to vote um, they, they pinpointed to Parkland, to the shooting at the, at the school in Florida, that they, they really, there was a big rush to get registered after that. So what is your message to younger voters in keeping schools or making schools safer? Uh, that was a horrible tragedy, but it comes back to this. Law enforcement failed. The FBI failed. The local law enforcement failed. That individual was very clearly disturbed. And he should have been stopped much before entering the school. And then when he got to the school, he should have been stopped by the people that had guns there. But he wasn't. So I would say that that was a failure of law enforcement. I would say that the Charleston shooting is a failure of law enforcement. When you have the shooter in Vegas collecting an arsenal, uh, it, these are things that should prompt rational individuals to look into uh, what's going on and whether they need to have additional surveillance or some sort of interventions necessary. So I would say that we need to increase uh, efficiencies in law enforcement. We need to increase the uh, technological connectivity between all the different agencies so we don't have another parkland where all the different agencies play hot potato with a case they don't want to deal with and then you got a bunch of dead kids. That's not the solution. We, we, need, to, we need to do our job and they didn't do their job in Parkland, and we didn't do our job in Charleston, and we can do better, and we must do better. Do you support the idea of, of um, an armed resource officer in every school? Absolutely. Also, do you support the idea of armed teachers in schools? So, number one, not only do we need armed uh, school resource officers, but we need very well-trained and competent school resource officers. Obviously, we see in Parkland, they had those, and they didn't work. So I don't know what can be done better, but we need to invest our resources. I can't go into a courthouse. I can't go into Congress. I can't go into the State House uh, without passing through metal detectors. I don't know what the answer is, but I'm open to whatever um, we, can, we can come up with that'll make it work. Um, as for armed teachers, if you've got a you know, 25 year Navy SEAL veteran who is teaching history in his twilight years and he wants to carry a gun, I don't see any problem with that, but there needs to be a very high standard. Um, just saying absolutely yes and absolutely no is also not realistic. We need to find a, a good system that would uh, get us better results. If, go ahead. Let's talk about the Kavanaugh hearings. I'm sure you watched and I'm sure that you, you, you formed some opinions about what sort of shook down in Washington during that time, especially during the Judicial Committee hearings. Um, in, in your opinion, uh, what was that a prime example of, of what America watched kind of unfold during all of that? I think it was a sad day for our country. It was definitely a sad day for the United States Senate. Uh, being a state senator, I can't express to you how important the decorum is, how important the body is. It, it, it transcends any one state senator, any one senator. And I don't know how long it will take and if it is possible to regain the respect in the United States Senate that it... it is supposed to command. Um, as for the underlying issue, 
I was a prosecutor for four years. I'm an attorney. 35-year-old allegations that lack any substantiation, any corroboration, any evidence other than an allegation is not something that uh, should be made into a circus. And it was a circus. And I am glad that he was confirmed. I do feel um, that victims of sexual assault need to have all of our resources to make sure that that doesn't happen. But in this case, I just don't, I don't put that in that category. Um, Harvey Weinstein, Bill Cosby, these people need to be held accountable for their actions without a doubt. And we need to make sure everyone feels safe physically and uh, as it relates to sexual assault, uh, you know, free of, free of fear. And we need to do everything we can to accomplish that. That said, what we saw in the Kavanaugh hearings was just a joke. Um, um, I've mentioned uh, health care, uh, uh, schools safer, and keeping schools safe, and um, that the Kavanaugh hearings. Uh, with less than 30 days to go now to the election, um, what, what priorities, what, top, what are your top three priorities, and what message do you want voters to hear from you on those? So two things. One, there's the candidate and what the candidate has done and is able to do. Two is what are the issues. So we'll start with the issues. I think that the federal debt, $22 trillion, is unsustainable. It's immoral to mortgage our kids and our grandkids' future. So that is definitely a top priority. Number two is immigration. We have 12 million people in this country illegally. That's contributing to our debt. That's contributing to the deficit spending. Uh, everybody has to pay their fair share. That's not unreasonable. Anybody that thinks it is, uh, I don't know how to have a constructive conversation with them. Um, Health care is definitely a problem. Our premiums have skyrocketed, our quality of care is lower, it is failing, we have to find a way to fix it. And fourth, and definitely not, not least, is public trust. We have lost faith in our institutions, whether it's the FBI, the DOJ, IRS, they all have uh, earned uh, distrust. So we gotta find a way to bring that back. As for the candidate, um, I think that I'm the best candidate for the job. I have a background as a prosecutor, as a su successful small business owner, as a state senator, and I was recently commissioned in the National Guard as a JAG officer. I think all of those uh, diverse experiences and education, educational backgrounds gives me the tools necessary to be effective as a congressman, and I'm gonna do everything I can to turn out the people on November 6th that agree with me. When did you, um, so this is, I, I've asked all the candidates this, when did you realize that you were a Republican? When, when did you go through that whole process of, saying I think I think this one lines up most with with my ideas or my ideals I, I guess in short maybe my whole life I don't like the government I've never liked the government I don't like being told what to do but You're I definitely small boy. Uh, yeah <laughs> I, I, as a very young child I didn't believe that other people should tell me what to do and ultimately the government needs to uh, stay out of everyone's way. Obviously, they need to protect us. Our, our national defense is critical. They need to pave our roads, which we're failing in South Carolina to do. Uh, they need to maintain safety and security, which again, we're failing. Um, if you're gonna view education as a, a, a public trust, uh, they need to educate our next generations. We're kind of failing there too. So outside of that, I don't know what uh, the role of government is. I, I think that we need to limit government. We need to keep government out of as many places as possible unless we have to. So limited government is my number one thing uh, as a Republican. And again, it's the question of, we got all these problems, and I think that the answer is to remove government and to apply private, private sector market forces to fix the problems. Whereas uh, the Democrats gonna say, increase taxes, and then the government's gonna fix it. Um, the government has never fixed anything. Uh, I mean, we, have, we literally fail at pretty much everything we do uh, at the federal government level, at state government level, we have to have it, but it's not efficient, it's not uh, effective, and we need less government, not more. This is a race that will have a, a, actually a third party, uh, a candidate with the American uh, party. Is, is that something that you welcome into your race for the South Carolina uh, Congressional District 4? And um, you know, what is your message to voters who might be considering, with the current climate in Washington, going with a third party this time? It's interesting, somebody talked about it recently. I, I'm not very familiar with the third party candidate, but it's essentially a splinter group of a splinter group. 
So the libertarians are a splinter group of the Republicans, and I agree with a lot of what uh, libertarians believe. And then the American Party candidate, the American Party seems to be a splinter of the libertarian group. So, uh, you know, ultimately, some people disillusioned with the two-party system may support the splinter party that splintered off of the splinter party. But um, I don't think it's going to be uh, substantial, you know, three, four, five percent maybe. Um, but ultimately, this is a very strong conservative district. I'm, I'm hopeful that I'll have a good result on November 6th. I'm working really hard to make sure that happens, but I'm also working really hard to hit the ground running in Washington next year. And um, it's, it's challenging. Uh, this is going to be a very important election. The uh, midterms will determine whether Trump's agenda continues for two more years or the government comes to a screeching halt. And uh, it's going to come down to a couple of seats. I'm working hard to make sure that we keep the House, and I'm working hard to make sure that all the Republicans get across the finish line on November 6th. So I appreciate, I appreciate you coming and asking yeah, me questions. Absolutely.